What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to talk about stimulus checks. Okay, now this is not going to be the video that you think it is. Okay, I'm not telling you that there's going to be stimulus checks. I'm going to explain the reason why politicians are not wanting to move forward with a stimulus check. Okay, now I, I posted a video yesterday and I talked a little bit about the fact that stimulus checks aren't going to happen because politicians aren't, they don't want to move forward with a stimulus check. I gave the reason why, because they, they think that it will uh, cause more inflation. But I want to show you, I'm going to show you an illustration. We're going to go over this whole thing. And I want to answer a question because right after I posted that video, uh, this is one of the questions that I received. And this comment came from Yolanda. And Yolanda, thank you for your comment. She says, why does spending money, and I think she meant cause inflation, when money circulates back to where it was sent out from? And so that is the question that she posed. And in this video, we're going to go over, I'm going to show you the illustration. So hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how things are working and why it's not just easy as money just circulating uh, from one person to a business back to that person and just circling around. It doesn't necessarily work that way. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime I post a video. We do daily videos. So by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you'll get notified every day. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up my illustration here. And you guys know me. I like doing these illustrations. It just it makes it easy. Realistically, when I'm doing research and I put up an illustration, I, it makes me understand things better. And so that's why I like to share this with you guys because I'm hoping that uh, when you see it, because I'm a visual learner, so when you see it, it will be instilled in your brain and you'll, you know, burned into your brain, I guess you can say, and you'll understand what I'm trying to, to say. And so when I posted the video yesterday, I just came out and said, this is why politicians don't want to move forward because of inflation and this and that. But when I show you an illustration, hopefully it will it will sink in just a little bit more. OK, so let, let's talk about this. So let's talk about and we're going to talk about two types of stimulus. So let's talk about a fourteen hundred dollar, just one stimulus check. And then down at the bottom, we'll talk about reoccurring payments because we've heard that in the past. Right now, this both of these stimulus checks are not happening. Politicians aren't talking about these. OK, but. I'm using these as an example to show you why politicians aren't talking about this and why some economists are afraid if we stimulate the economy anymore right now, it would be bad instead of good. So let's go ahead. Let's look at this. So we're going to look at the stimulus checks and we know how this all works, right? So the House and the Senate, they have to come up with a bill. So let's say the bill starts in the House, and then it goes to the Senate and it passes both the House and the Senate and then it moves to the president. And then the president goes ahead and signs off on this stimulus check. Okay, and so we have a $1,400 stimulus check coming our way. And so check comes, I get that, that $1,400 stimulus check. So with that money, what am I going to do with it? Well, people are going to do different things. Some people are going to spend it right away. Some people are going to hold on to it for a little bit. Some people are going to go out and buy necessities. Uh, some people might just go out and buy things that they've, a big screen TV that they've always wanted or something like that. But the, the vast majority of people are going to spend the money at some point. Okay, let's say in a six-month period, they go ahead and spend that money. So when we're looking at the different, uh, and I, I use the housing market because the housing market is probably the easiest to visualize. For me, it's the easiest to visualize. So let's say I have $1,400. And let's say I'm in the market to buy a home. I can use that $1,400 to, as a down payment to buy a home. And so let's say I do that. And you have a lot of people doing the same thing. Guess what? That's going to drive the prices of houses up because we have people have more money. There's more money in the market and people are out there wanting to buy houses and you're competing against each other to buy a house. Just like uh, if you're on eBay and you're bidding on a product, it's the same thing. You're bidding on a house and you're pushing the price of that house up higher and higher. At least that's what we've seen in the last few years. We've seen houses go for over asking price. So you ask for 300,000 and it was going for 325 or 350 because people were pushing that price up, okay? They were bidding up on it. So if you have more money, you have an opportunity to do that. You have an opportunity to spend more. So that means the houses will go up, okay? Now, if it's rent, it's the same thing or it's very similar. So if it's rent, you're looking at a situation where if you have an extra $1,400, you can say, okay, well, you know what? 
I want to get this this apartment that's let's say it was the average price for an apartment is thirteen hundred dollars or thirteen hundred and twenty six dollars. So let's say the landlord knows that these stimulus checks went out. And so they say, you know what, I'm going to raise it up to fourteen hundred and twenty six dollars. OK, and let's say you were at a point where you could pay the average. You could afford to pay the average. And we're talking about before the stimulus check came out. You could afford to pay that $1,326, but you can't afford to pay $100 more. Okay, So now looking at the situation, if they raise it up, and I put the comma in the wrong place here, let's say they raise it up to $1,426 and you receive that $1,400 stimulus check, then guess what? You can take $100 from that $1,400 stimulus check every month for, for, for what? Uh, tw- 14 months, you can take $100 from that and put it towards your rent. And so now you can afford the rent for this, this place for 14 months, and that's it. Now, let's say you stay at that place beyond that 14 months, then guess what? Now you're in that same situation before where now you can't afford it because if it's $1,426, guess what? The landlord's not going to drop the rent. They're probably going to go up on the rent. The rent will probably go up even higher uh, so you're in a situation where you're going to probably have to pay more than that $1,426, but you no longer have that stimulus check. That stimulus money is gone. Okay, So now you have a price that, that, that's inflated, and it was inflated due to the fact that you had a $1,400 stimulus check. Right Now, I'm not saying that stimulus checks are the reason why we're looking at inflation right now, the only reason why we're looking at inflation. There are other factors that, that play a role. But the reason that I'm talking about it, talking about stimulus checks and inflation is because I posted that video yesterday and I talked about it. And so I'm trying to explain that to you. Okay, so understand there's, there are other factors. Okay, supply and demand. If, if, there's, if you're in a situation where there's no, you don't have the product, if a store doesn't have a lot of the product on the shelves and there's a heavy demand for that product, guess what? Prices are going up. Okay, that's, that's the way things go. And just like we were talking about bidding on houses Prices will go up. If people start bidding on houses, prices are going to go up. So there are other factors, but just looking at stimulus checks and how they affect our economy, they can be a plus, but they can also be a negative in situations where we have inflation like we have right now. Okay, gas prices, same thing. Okay, so if the gas prices, if you get a $1,400 stimulus check, you can now afford to pay more for gas. And if you can afford to pay more for gas, then guess what? The price of, of the gas prices will go up because you can afford it. And if if I have a if I'm selling gas, if I have a you know a, a, a station and I'm selling gas, I, I I don't I'm not in fear of raising the prices because I know you can afford it because you have a little a little bit of extra money. And so let's look at stores. Let's look at stores. There's the same situation here. Okay, so you have more money, and stores know that you have more money. And this is the average. I just put the averages. This is all up-to-date averages. So the average uh, dozen eggs is $3.41. So that average could go up because why? They know people can afford it. And if people are going in the store and they're buying eggs and there are no problem with buying eggs at $3.41, well, let's raise it to $4 and let's see what happens if we raise it to $4. Are people still going to buy? They probably will because they have a little bit of extra money. And so that's how that works. And it can continue to go up. Now, when it comes to to things like eggs and things that will expire, if they get to a point where they have too many eggs, if the store has too many eggs on the shelf, then they need to get rid of them. And so if they need to get rid of them, then that's when they're going to have those sales. Okay, so that's how that will happen. And they'll have to lower prices because people can't afford to buy them. And if people can't afford to buy them, they need to get them off the shelves. So that's the reason why they'll, they'll have the sales. And you'll see that. You go through the stores, you'll see certain items that are marked down and all that stuff, clearance and all that. That's because they have too much of that item or they're discontinuing it. They're not buying any more of it. They just want to get it off the shelves. Okay, so... Now, if we're looking at reoccurring payments, and I'll briefly just go over this because it's, it's pretty much the same blueprint, okay? But the thing with reoccurring payments, if it's $2,000 a month, then all this stuff will be amplified even more, and the prices will go even higher. So if you're renting a place and you're getting $2,000 uh, $2, a month until the pandemic is over, that, we've been hearing that, right? So $2,000 a month until the pandemic's over, well... Let's say it's six months. Six months down the road, you're getting two thousand a month, 
And now you're saying, well, I, I can afford a $2,300 uh, rent, $2,300 rent because I have this $2,000 coming in a month. But when that runs down, when it when it's over, when the pandemic is over and they stop doing the reoccurring payments, then guess what? Now you're stuck in an apartment that you can't afford. Or you're going to be scrambling because you can get out of that lease and you'll have to find another place. But the rent has gone up on all these places because the landlords see, okay, they're getting reoccurring payments so we can raise the rent up and see, you know, we can, the highest bidder can get the apartment. And that would be a situation there that, you know, would be bad for a lot of people because now everyone's looking at uh, $2,300 for, for, to rent a place out. And the only reason that the landlords would lower that price is if no one can afford it. If no one can afford it at that price, then they'll start dropping uh, the rent. But that doesn't always happen. It very rarely happens because you're always going to find someone that's going to be able to f- be able to afford it, and and they'll they'll find a way and they'll get in there, or they might have multiple families living in one apartment and things like that, uh, just to afford it. But then that that cuts you out, and now you you don't have the reoccurring payments anymore, and so now you're stuck with let's say you you, you can afford a thirteen hundred and twenty six dollar house, but or apartment. But now you can't find one because the prices have gone up on all of the apartments. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, I want to talk about what is going on right now and what the Federal Reserve is doing and why they're raising interest rates and how that will affect everything. And we could be in a situation where we circle around and get to the point where now the government wants us to spend. And if we get to that point, then guess what? Now we would be looking at stimulating the economy, sending out stimulus checks, sending out uh, bailouts to companies and all that kind of stuff. So let, let's look at that because this is important for us to understand as well. So we have the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. Okay, And why are they raising interest rates? They're trying to cool off our economy. Okay, So just looking at this situation, if you're in the market to buy a house and they're raising interest rates, and right now I think it's like 7.5%, but we'll just use 7%. Right now, so if I want to buy a home, thirty-year fixed, it's going to be seven percent interest. That's what I'm going to be getting. Last year, it was three percent. Now it's seven percent. What is the difference in that? And would I still buy a home now as opposed to buying a home last year, or should I wait? And that—that's the big question. And so this is how they cool off the economy. So if the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, and now we're looking at interest rates at seven percent to buy a home. And we're looking at a house. This right here is $1,996. And this is not taxes and insurance and all that, okay? This is just the 30-year fixed at 7%. $1,996. Look at the difference if it's at 3%. 3% is $1,265. So that's $700 more now than it was last year. And so why would you want to buy a house in a situation like that? Unless you absolutely needed to buy a house right now, there's no reason. You should wait. You should wait until the interest rates go back down. And so that's what a lot of people are going to start doing, and they've already started doing it, because it's slowing that economy. It's slowing, it's cooling off the economy, the, the, the hot market, the hot uh, real estate market that we've seen over the, uh, the last several years. And so they're going to cool it off, okay? And, and this is on a $300,000 home. I, I don't think I said that. So $300,000 home, $1,996 at 7%. And if it's at 3%, it's $1,265. So you can see it makes sense to wait. Now, what's bad about that is the rental market. The rental market is going up. And the rental market is going up because people are choosing not to buy homes. And if you choose not to buy a house, you still have to have a place to stay. And so now there's more demand for renting an apartment. And if there's more demand, then guess what the landlords are going to do? They're going to hike up the prices because there's more demand. And so in, in the rental market, we're seeing the prices go up. Okay, And so that's, that's the, the downfall of, of raising interest rates and, and cooling off the economy to where people don't want to buy homes. Now, if they don't want to buy a house, they have to rent. And if they're renting, they're probably going to be paying uh, more because of that. Now, let's look at another scenario. Let's look at me here. Let's say I have my credit cards and I want to go out and I spend. Now, let's, and and when it comes to credit cards, let me tell you this. I, I use credit cards for all of my purchases, but I pay my credit cards off every month. 
I never carry a balance on my credit cards, especially in a situation right now where the APR, the, the interest rate, it's adjustable and it's up there. It's like 19.5% now. Okay. For most credit cards, they're raising that interest. Okay. And it, they, it's adjustable so they can adjust it how they see fit and they are adjusting it and moving it way up. Okay. And so let's say I use my credit cards, I pay cash, I do a variety of different, you know, I do, I have a strategy. So I don't, you know, I spend the money that I, that I make, um, like my paycheck, and then I use my credit cards for, for all those other purchases. And let's just say, now, like I said, I pay my credit cards off every month. The average person doesn't. The average person is paying that minimum payment. That's all they're doing, okay? And so they're, they're going deeper and deeper into debt. If you're in a situation like this and you know that your interest, your, you, the interest that you're going to be paying when you pay back your, your credit cards is 19.5%, then guess what? You're probably going to think twice before you use that credit card. And so that means less spending. And so if you are spending less, because let's say you, you get your paycheck, you spend that money, and then you also have your credit card you're spending, but you say, you know what? I'm not going to spend on the credit card because the interest rates is just too high. And so you choose not to do that. Now you're cooling off the economy. You're, you're not stimulating the economy as much as you were before because of the interest on those credit cards, okay? Now, if you choose to continue to spend on those credit cards and you're paying the minimum balance, let's just give an example. You have a balance of $1,000 on your credit card and you have 19.5% interest, then guess what? That's $190 every month that you have to pay an interest. And if you're paying the minimum balance of 40 or $45, then you're just falling deeper and deeper into debt because $190 is the interest. You're not even paying the interest. And let's say you work to a point where you can pay $200. You could pay $200 a month on your, your credit card. You're still barely getting over the interest. And so you're still, the, the money, that $1,000 that you owed, it's still there. It's still sitting there. So that's how people fall deep, deep into debt. And it just, you know, it spirals out of control. And so in a situation like this, I'm not really wanting to spend money on my credit cards because I don't want that interest to go up. So now I'm cooling off the economy because I'm not spending the way that I was spending before. Now, guess who that's going to hurt? That's going to hurt stores. Because if I'm not going in those stores and spending like I was before, then those stores are not going to be making the same profits that they were making before, right? And then also the stores they're not going to want to take out loans. They're not going to want to use the business credit cards because of the high interest. And if they do use those business credit cards, they're going to be paying those high, that high interest rates. And so they're going to be, their profits are going to, to go down, right? And so looking at this whole situation, this is what the Federal Reserve is trying to do. They're trying to cool off our economy by raising interest rates. Now, let's look at the reverse of this, okay? So let's look at the stores, and we talked about the stores being struggling, right? So they're struggling because people are spending less in the stores. So what are the stores going to do? And, and they're in a situation where they don't want to take out loans because the interest rates are too high, and they don't want to use their credit cards. And so they start saying, well, we're not making the same profits that we were making before, so we have to lay people off. And so they lay me off. And if they lay me off, and I have credit card debt, then guess what? I can't pay my credit card debt. And so now I'm not buying anything at stores. So they, they've laid people off. And let's say it's Amazon. They laid 10,000 people off. We just heard that news last week. And so you have 10,000 people in the same situation that I'm in where they can't, they can't really spend more at the stores because they don't have a job. And some of them might own houses or they might be renting. And now they can't pay mortgage and they can't pay their rent. And so they could be evicted or they could be in a situation where their house gets foreclosed on. And so all these things can happen and we could fall deep into a recession. And that is the fear. OK, so stores can go under. When it comes to, to individuals, they might have to file for bankruptcy because they're in debt and they have no way of, of paying their debt. And then people lose their houses. So now you have a bunch of houses on the market and there's no one to buy those houses. And so that's when we go into a deep recession. And if we fall into a deep recession, then guess what? The federal government has to do something because our economy is tanking. And so what are they going to do? 
first thing they're going to do, bail out some of these companies. Give them some incentives. Give them some, some money to, to help them out. What else are they going to do? They, the businesses can't run on their own. They need people to come in and buy their products. So that's when they want to stimulate the economy. So stimulus checks, things like that. Give people incentives to buy, tax credits. And the stimulus check was a tax credit anyway, but give more tax credits so people will get out there and buy. And when it comes to houses, have special programs to help people out, help people buy homes. So everything, so everyone will start stimulating the economy. Businesses, individuals, the housing market will start to, to rise again. And so that's what we're going to be looking at if we fall into a deep recession. But all of this stuff is going to take time. Okay, and I know I just drew over this whole thing, uh, but all this is going to take time. And we're in the, the early stages of this. I mean, we, we're really in the early stages because we're at a point now where we're seeing some businesses lay people off. That's what we're seeing right now. And we'll probably see more, we will see more layoffs starting next year because right now, you know, it's, it's the holidays and, and, and people are still spending. And so after the holidays, January, February, March, we're going to see layoffs. We might see major layoffs. And that's going to affect a lot of people because they're not going to have money. You lay them off, they don't have money, they can't pay their credit cards, they can't pay their house, they can't pay for rent, and that's just a domino effect across the board. And so what the Federal Reserve has said, well, they haven't really said this, but this is what we think, they're going to raise interest rates one more time in December, so December 14th, and then from that point on, they're going to see what happens, okay, because they, might, they don't want to cool the economy off too much, because then we get into the scenario that I just went over where everything pretty much, the economy just completely tanks. They don't want the economy to completely tank. They just want people to spend less because that will bring down inflation. Okay, And so that's the way we're looking at it. Now, getting back to that question that was asked uh, in, in the comments as far as doesn't the money just you know recycle and, and come back? Well, not all the money does. Because if I have a $1,400 stimulus check, and I go spend that money at a store, some of that money will go to profit, some of that money will go to pay the employees and all that, and some of that money will go to the, the, the company, right? And, and some of the people at the top, uh, they, the, the millionaires, they're the millionaires and the billionaires, they'll get that money, but the reality is a lot of millionaires and billionaires don't even spend the money they have. I mean, it's hard to spend. It would be hard to spend a million dollars a year if you think about it. So let's say you're making a million dollars a year. A lot of that money is going in investments and, and you, it goes into your savings. So you're not really spending all that money every year. You can only buy so much, right? Billionaires, they have so much money, they don't know what to do with that money. And that's why you see a lot of philanthropy. You see them uh, going to these nonprofits and, and giving money away and, and things like that because they know they can't spend it. And so I just wanted, in this video, I just wanted to show you kind of the illustration of why a forced stimulus check is not being talked about and why politicians as well as economists, some economists are afraid to move forward with stimulating the economy even more because they know if they stimulate the economy even more, it could raise inflation up even higher and that's not what anyone wants. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any further questions, please post them down below. And one more thing, one more thing before I go. Uh, I'm going to start promoting different channels on my channel because there are some YouTubers that are out there that are talking about the same topics that I talk about, and they're very good, and there's some that aren't so good. But I'm going to share with you guys some of my recommendations. I have a friend right now. I'm going to be promoting his channel on my channel. Uh, the channel is Mostly Money, so go ahead and check him out. He talks about the same topics that I talk about, Social Security, talks about legislation and all that. Uh, so if you guys want to go over to his channel, let him know that – I sent you. So in the comments, just tell them that uh, TEC sent me or, or what have you. Check out his video. Subscribe to his channel. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, like I said, let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.